Hello everyone, welcome back. We're here in the store, it's Artisan's Palette. My name is Pia Maffei, and I'm joined by the wonderful Sharissa Bradley, also known as the Doctor of Food. Every month we do a Clean Eating 101 class here in the store. So today is Wednesday, and it is about four o'clock, and that's when we do the class. So the first several months we've been doing the 10 Commandments of Clean Eating. And if you want to follow along with those commandments, please go to www.iamacleaneater.com and you'll find all 10 commandments there. We are on commandment number nine. You probably can't read it because you probably see it backwards. backwards. <laughs> so, but look at how cute the t-shirts are and so you can get these online. Yep. So number nine, commandment number nine is don't succumb to peer pressure. Before Sharissa starts the class, she goes through and explains one through nine. So this means we've done nine months. I know, right? cool. How great is that? So nine cool. months. So, and then next month will be our last one on this series, and then we'll see what we want to pick up after that. So don't succumb to peer pressure. When I read, when I wrote the Ten Commandments for Clean Eating, I wrote this commandment because I want to share a little story with you and I think it's poignant to share this story today on Valentine's Day. I had an elderly gentleman in my store and it was around Christmas time a couple years ago and he had a, a pretty devastating diagnosis given to him with regards to a memory issue. Okay. And so he wanted to turn things around. So he was like, oh, I really don't want to do the sugar. And it was a dementia type diagnosis. And so we started talking and he was really trying his best, but he had a lot of mem just brain fog. And he said to me, he goes, you know, I was doing so well. And because it's the office parties, um, they were the, his people at his work were like, oh, just take a bite. Just take a bite of that cake. It's, a, it's not gonna kill you. Um, and so how many times do we hear this, right? And I said to him, I go, you know what's breaking my heart right now? I said to him, if you were an alcoholic, nobody at any time would have said, oh, take a drink, Never. just one little drink. It's not gonna hurt you, right? So this is the problem with peer pressure and today is Valentine's Day and so many people are going to get candy from C's Candy, Ghirardelli, um, What's the one in, in the in the in the gold Russell, box? Uh, Russell Stover's as in a different one, but there's one in a gold box with the black shape. with the black bow, mm, whatever no whatever it is. Anyway, Godiva. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna overpay Double. a lot, okay, on chocolate that isn't worth it. That doesn't even have cacao in the ingredient list. It might have cocoa, but not cacao. Okay. Isn't that funny? I never even think about that. <laughs> it doesn't, like, doesn't even, even have real chocolate it doesn't, it in it. It doesn't even have it. Okay. So this peer pressure is huge because you say, oh, well, he got it for me as a gift. So I'm just going to have a little bite. And so think of it. Okay. On January, in January, you probably thought, oh, I'm going to do a little bit better. I'm going to try to stay on track. We already had Super Bowl. So I don't know how you did after Super Bowl. Mm. And now it's Valentine's Day. The slide is starting, and then Easter's coming up, okay? Because Lent just started today. So you're gonna get this slide that starts, so it's going to be up to you to say, how much of this am I gonna allow in, and how much peer pressure am I going to allow to have happen to me, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is such an important commandment. Please go to www.iamacleaneater.com to follow all the commandments. I'm going to pass it over to Sharissa right now. She's going to continue, and then she'll start with a little brief intro of all the commandments. Sharissa, it's all okay, yours. Okay, all right. We'll so Kia touched on a ton of really great points, and we are going to talk about that in the next few minutes, but I do want to give you a little bit of a run-through of what we've talked about so far in this series. So we've gone through the, we're up to commandment number nine. Again, don't let, don't succumb to peer pressure, but before we got there, we did eight other classes on this subject for the 10 commandments for clean eating. If you're unfamiliar with the 10 commandments for clean eating, you can go to www.iamacleaneater.com and click on the 10 commandments link. And then there's a little bit of a description on each one of those, as well as blogs that go into further detail on each one and the links right there on the website for the videos of each one of these in the series. So the first one, 
Commandment number one, let the ingredient list guide you. So what that means and what we talked about was instead of paying attention to that nutrition facts on your label where it says, you know, the percentage of sodium and the percentage of fat and the percentage of protein and calories and all of that, instead we want you to focus primarily on that list of ingredients. So what is physically in the food or in the product that's creating those percentages in the first place. And when you're looking at the ingredients versus looking at the nutrition facts, you can actually determine whether or not those foods, the actual ingredients, are what you want in your body. So for instance, if you stay away from soy or gluten or dairy or one of these things, you can look right there in the nutrition facts and see whether or not one of those ingredients is listed, sorry, not the nutrition facts, the ingredients, and then decide right from there whether or not you're gonna continue to eat that product or buy that product. So that's commandment number one, let the ingredient list guide you. Commandment number two, go organic, non-GMO. We've talked about this in several aspects of our 10 commandments because it's not just um, what you're buying, what you're eating, but really learning about what it is that's in the product. So how those fruits or vegetables were grown, how those animals were grown, um, what exactly is happening. So we, we give as the kind of guideline, as the minimum standard to do non-GMO foods, as well as organic if you can. So organic non-GMO is your commandment number two. Commandment number three is watch out for deceptive marketing. And this has to do with those fancy little labels they put on the front of a package that suggests what it is free from. Perhaps it's fat free or low fat or light products. Um, even things like uh, dairy free or gluten free right on the packaging. You wanna make sure that you're still going back and looking at those ingredients to make sure that they don't have things in them that you don't wanna consume. So watch out for the deceptive marketing, watch out for the advertising people paying to try to get you to buy things rather than you actually getting to be healthy with those foods. Um, commandment number four was grow your own. And we talked a little bit about how to make sure you're getting, you know, really great organic produce in your own home, even if that's having a vegetable garden or having a towered herbs, something like that. Just one thing that you can maybe change for yourself and in your home. So that's grow your own. We gave tons of good tips for how to grow small spaces, how to grow um, and how to find out how to grow things. There's lots of tips in that video as well. Um, Commandment number five is shop local farmer's markets. So we want you to know where your farmer's markets are. Go talk to the people who are selling the produce in your area and get to know those people. So shop and support the local communities like this fancy little store in Artisan's Art called Artisan's Palette here in Temecula, California, or going to your local artisanal stores, health food stores and supporting them. Um, commandment number six was stay educated and stay informed. Just watching this video, just watching us have this conversation, that's already you starting to get informed and get educated. You can also go to the website, look at the blog posts, look at some of the research that we've done there, and get some information. Find a couple of people that you really trust and go to them for your answers. Uh, commandment number seven goes right along with that, ask questions. And in that class, in that, in that topic, we talked about how to ask the right questions to people in your community. So if you're looking at local produce, local farmers markets, local stores, even restaurants, you want to know where the food is coming from, how is it being grown, all of these things so that you can really make sure you're getting answers that you deserve and eating the right things. Okay. Commandment number eight was get moving and stay active. And we talked about building yourself a movement plan and getting your body moving every day. And that doesn't mean starting some really intense, high intense program right away. It means maybe starting where you're at. Maybe you haven't walked in a long time. Maybe try walking around the block, park a little further at the grocery store. Just get some movement in your day and start wherever you're at. Last we're at our 10th commandment number nine, which again, don't succumb to peer pressure. And I wanna go in and touch on the things that Pia had mentioned um, earlier in the introduction that today, especially today is Valentine's Day for those of you who are watching the replay on another day or watching it in the program. The today is an even more important day than, you know, some other holidays because we're, we're being peer pressured into the candies, the treats. If you're not getting a box of chocolates, you must not be loved. Or if you're not getting some 
bag of candy or treats or whatever it is, then you're somehow less than, you know, the other couples or not as good as the other couples. So obviously this is completely ridiculous, but because of the holiday, we have even more added pressure to go into these, you know, habits that really aren't serving us at all. So when we're eating or when we're going to parties or when we're going to holiday events, things like this, and we're trying really, really, really hard to be on a specific program or a specific diet or, or whatever it is that you're trying to do for you in your life, if there are people around you that are constantly pushing you or that just one bite won't kill you type attitude, that's not going to help you thrive in this environment. So a little bit about me. I'm Sharissa Bradley, also known as the doctor of food, and I help people get on a clean eating plan. What that means that following the 10 commandments is that we're going to know exactly where the food came from and how it got from our, from wherever it came from to us. And that's really what we're all about here. We want you to have the answers. We want you to know what is on the end of your fork and what it took to get it to the end of that fork. So really understanding about your food, those good questions and knowing what it is that you're doing for yourself. So peer pressure. This is such an interesting thing because it it's uh, peer pressure is apparent in in every aspect of our lives, right? It's a, it's apparent as a as a young child, it's apparent in um, like party scenes and now in our health and in our relationships and really even in our families. There's there's this peer pressure, this pressure that we receive or even if it's perceived pressure from other people about our lifestyle and our life choices. So one way that we can, or one an example of this, first of all, an example, um, I have a client of mine who uh, she's trying really, really hard to do the clean eating lifestyle. So she buys the right kind of meat and she buys all of the right things. And unfortunately, her significant other living in the same household doesn't agree with these practices doesn't believe that eating the right way can affect your body in any way. It doesn't doesn't believe that eating clean can help you lose weight or eating clean can help you with your, your health challenges. And that's really the platform is that if we eat clean, allow the body to heal itself, we can really be free of all the medications, all of the, you know, health interventions throughout our lifetime and that's that's the premise that if we eat a good healthy clean diet we can live a good healthy clean life for a long period of time without having any of these health challenges but in order to get away from that peer pressure in order to get out of that that feeling of I have to do what other people want me to do because we are as human as human beings inclined to that human connection and we want to be liked by our peers and we want to be accepted and we want to feel included so if you're going you decide to give up sugar or you decide to give up alcohol for a month or you decide to give up whatever it is gluten dairy whatever it is that you decide for you for the next whatever life, whatever time span that you're not going to do, you are going to face people in your life constantly that are going to ask you questions like, well, why don't you do that? And that's silly. I've never even heard that before. And well, can't you just have one piece of cake? It's not going to kill you. The reason that they're putting that pressure on you is because of this need for us to be included. And if you're saying that you don't want to be a part of that group anymore, then that comes off, that can come off as judgmental to the other person. So they want you included. So there's this real high pressure, high stakes pressure to get you to do the same activity because otherwise you're on the outside. And the reason that peer pressure works is because we so badly want to be on the inside too. We so badly want to be part of the group too. And so we start thinking to ourselves, well, will one bite really kill me? And would it hurt if I just did this one thing? And the answer invariably is yes, it will hurt. It will hurt something. Even if it just hurt your confidence and your ability to stand up and say, no, this is what I'm going to do for myself. So we have to 
build up a fortress around ourselves, not just of food and of confidence, but of the people that feel the same way that we do. So build a like-minded audience, someone that can come and talk to you, someone that can have your back, someone that can feel the same way that you do so that you don't have that that pressure, at least so you have like a, like a little buddy system. Like, oh, if we both just stay as far as we can away from the birthday cake, we can keep each other occupied. And if you don't have that, then the best way to succumb to not succumb to peer pressure is to build up your own confidence enough and really stand firm in your beliefs. No, I don't eat that because that's not who I am anymore and I don't eat those things anymore. And when that's your part of your core, part of your identity, part of who you are, then when someone asks you, well, that one bite won't kill you, to you, it does, right? It kills who you are, who you built for you to be who you, part of your identity. It does hurt you. And it will kill some part of your confidence and your ability to continue to stand up to those people and fight for you and who you are and what you've set for yourself. So if you're, if you're choosing a path to cut something out or add something in or live a specific lifestyle, you really have to build that into who you are so that nobody can take that away from you. And until and that takes time, it's, a, it's not gonna come overnight. You're not going to make some decision and then all of a sudden tomorrow not be able to you know, succumb to that peer pressure. It's gonna take time. For me, it took about a year. It took about a year for me to say, no, that's not who I am and actually one bite could kill me. It will hurt me, it will affect me in some way, and your judgment of that or your, your belief of that doesn't, doesn't hurt my core values because I've, I've stood up and said, no, I'm not gonna do that. So give yourself the grace, give yourself the time when you've made a decision to, to move on to that path. And of course we here at I Am A Clean Eater recommend a clean eating path. Whatever that diet looks like for you, Make sure that it has good wholesome ingredients from whatever plants or animals it is that you decide to consume that came from a good place. So understand where clean eating comes from and go back and look at our website and go back and look at what it is that's taught, what, that we mean when we talk about clean eating. But we also want to help build you up personally. So if you're having a problem with not being able to withstand that peer pressure, you're going to the office parties, there's cake, there's donuts because it's Wednesday and you're struggling with those things, then come talk to us. Comment on this video or send us a private message and let us help be your community to build you up. Because all we want for you is clean eating, clean lifestyle, longevity, health, and just overall wellness for your life. And if we have to be your cheerleaders, we are so excited and happy to do that because that's our passion too. So find your like-minded community, build up your tribe, and build it into who you are, that this is who you're, what you're gonna do and who you are as a person. And don't let Valentine's Day or the Super Bowl or Easter or Mother's Day or whatever it is, give you any kind of excuse to question your standings and your character and who you are and what you've decided to do for yourself. So again, 10 Commandments for Clean Eating. This is our ninth episode, ninth in the series on Don't Succumb to Peer Pressure. We're so excited if you've stuck with us this far. Thank you so much. If you haven't gotten a chance and maybe you're just joining us, go back and watch the first eight because the little golden nuggets of information in those videos are just incredibly important to help build you up and make you this awesome, healthy, clean eating person in your own life. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you comment below if you have any questions or you're feeling stuck and need some support and we'll be there for you. Have a great day and thanks for joining us.